Hi everyone, Derek Latchett from E1 here with a brief tutorial about determining how far an E1 pump can pump. So a question we're often asked, and, and if you've ever wondered how far an E1 pump can pump, you know, we get this question uh, a lot from uh, property owners or land developers that are trying to determine if a remotely located property uh, or a subdivision can reach the city sewer. Um, so as listed kind of right here, we're trying to figure out, hey, we're this far away from the city sewer. Can we make it with an E1 pump? Is, a, is an E1 per sewer system or an E1 grinder pump station feasible in this application? Sometimes we're also working with engineers or municipalities trying to determine the ideal discharge location for a pressure sewer system. Maybe there is an existing municipal gravity sewer, and we're trying to figure out which discharge point, which manhole in that sewer system to discharge to. So this process can help us determine feasibility of the different different uh, uh, options that we have. And speaking of different discharge options, maybe there are a variety of discharge options. We could be discharging into a manhole or maybe into a pressure main or a force main. Uh, maybe we are trying to determine if we can reach the wastewater treatment plant. So this process can be can be used to determine you know, how far, what's what's the feasibility of reaching the, the selected discharge point. So what do we need to know when we're going through this process? Well, first we need to know if there's any elevation change. It's one of the first things. Are we pumping uphill or is this just across a straight line? Because the, the pumping distance will vary if we have to pump uphill as well as across a long distance. So we need to, we need to know if there's any elevation change uh, along that, that pumping distance. We need to know what sort of pipe we're going to use. If it's if it's a new pipe, if it's proposed, then uh, is there a preference? Otherwise, E1 might use our default, which would be SDR11 HDPE. Um, but if if the project requires maybe SDR21 PVC or something like that, it's good to know that up front. Sometimes we are pumping through an existing pipeline. We're trying to see if this can be extended. So we just need to know what the type and size of that pipe is going to be. And then finally, kind of like I talked about on the other the slide, uh, knowing what type of discharge we're going to. So one of the most common is that we're pumping to a gravity sewer. Again, it's that that development on the outskirts of an existing municipality, and we're trying to see can we reach uh, that existing uh, collection system. So we're going to be talking about discharging into gravity. We also can discharge into a force main, but I'm not going to talk about it in this tutorial. There are other resources for me. One do describe that process for determining if we can connect to a force main. So before we go any further, let's visualize the problem, what we're trying to solve. So first, uh, we have our house and our grinder pump station located at, at some point and kind of shown here uh, on the on the left hand side of the slide. Uh, I'm just going to show what it looks like with an elevation change. So you see that there is a, an elevation change of 25 feet where we are showing our discharge location. In this case, it's gravity, and this is this is supposed to be a, a gravity manhole. So ultimately, what's circled here is what we're trying to determine. How far can this manhole be, or how far can the house be from that manhole, and the E1 pump still work in this application? So now that we know kind of the, 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 the concept, what we're trying to solve, how do we do it? So we can do a variety of calculations by hand, uh, or we can use the E1 Design Assistant as a tool to help us determine this feasibility. And using the E1 Design Assistant, we are going to determine what the velocity uh, in that pipeline is, is going to be. We're going to we're going to understand the total dynamic head. And that's one of the, the key things. We're going to understand the total dynamic head. And, and essentially, um, what, we're, what we need to determine is um, in order to pump through a pipe that is this, this size, this long, that goes up this sort of hill, is it less than the capability of the pump? So effectively, if the, if the system total dynamic head is less than 185 feet, then an E1 pump will work in that application. And the final, final thing we're going to talk about is retention time. How long does it take for that, that wastewater, that sewage, to move through that long pipe to that discharge point? And we're going to talk about the consequences of long pumping distances. As the total dynamic head on the system increases, the total dynamic head that the pump must overcome in order to push through this pipe, it's going to decrease the service life of the pump, much like the longer you drive, the more your tires are going to wear out or you have to change the oil more more regularly and the service interval will decrease. Uh, likewise, we need to keep in mind that just because we can pump up to, say, 185 feet of head doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. 
E1 standard practice is to keep the total dynamic head as low as possible to satisfy some other requirements, specifically velocity. But again, just because we can operate at 185 feet doesn't always mean it's a good idea. Just because you can drive 120 miles an hour doesn't mean it's a good idea to always do that. And we're going to talk about how long retention time is going to be something to consider during these long pumping applications. And we just need to consider the risks uh, specifically of odor and, uh, and corrosion at that, that discharge point. Okay, so now that we kind of know the process, we're going to, I'm going to show you how Design Assistant can be used to, to help you understand this. And if you don't have E1 Design Assistant, you can follow this, this URL or scan the QR code, and it'll take you to the spot where you can um, uh, download the E1 Design Assistant. So first, I'm just going to hop over to Design Assistant. Uh, first screen is the project information, and this is just going to be, you know, sample long distance pumping. Um, and you can fill in these other fields as, as you see fit. The most important thing is this lower left-hand side. Uh, we need to make sure we select the correct units and uh, power frequency. So for this application, I'm going to select U.S. units or imperial units and the frequency. If I'm working in the U.S., I'm also going to make sure that 60 hertz is, is selected. Uh, so once I've set those parameters, I'm going to go to the design information. This is my compass and square. And from here, this is where I can start putting uh, some of my sample information in. And if we go back to that, um, that uh, visualized system, we're just going to be talking about a single pump. So we're going to have a single zone. Um, and that single zone, uh, we're going to call pump or zone one. And it's going to connect to zone one. That's how we tell the software that it's discharging uh, in that zone. Number of pumps, we're just talking about a single house. We want to see how far my house that I'm going to build is, is going to move. The flow rate per pump is, is variable as long as it's within the, within the E1 pump curve. Uh, if you just hit tab, it'll put in a default of 11 gallons per minute when working in imperial units. And that's kind of right in the middle of the, of the flow curve. So kind of that average. Likewise, gallons per day per dwelling. Um, this is, uh, again, a default that's up in the toolbar of 200 gallons per day, or you can put in whatever is actually practical for it. And this number is going to be reasonably important because uh, this is used in our retention time calculation. I'm just going to use our default of about 200 gallons per day. Now, zone length, uh, we don't know yet, uh, but we need to put a, a number in to start with. So uh, for now, I'm just going to put, say, 250 feet in. Um, our maximum main elevation is going to be that 25 feet. So that's the top of the hill. And the pump elevation is going to be zero. So the difference between the two of those is the, the hill that I'm going to go over, essentially the static head. So once we have this basic information, now we can go design to design page one. Uh, the software performs a variety of calculations and gives us a recommended pipe size. Before I go any further, uh, this drop down at the toolbar is where we select what pipe type we're going to use. So for the rest of this tutorial, I'm just going to be talking in terms of SDR21 PVC, um, but other pipe sizes you can select. And, and if you select a different pipe size, it'll automatically update everything. Uh, the pipe size, or excuse me, the pipe type dictates what that internal diameter uh, uh, is. Different pipe materials use different, different uh, internal diameters, even if they use the same uh, nominal sizing. Okay, so here we are right now uh, with with this uh, this pipe length. Excuse me, this um, uh, single pump, uh, 250 feet is the length of the zone. So that's as far as I'm pumping with this static head or this uphill of 25 feet. And we see with these parameters, I get uh, two feet per second of velocity, which is um, is meets my scouring velocity requirement of two feet per second. So it's right on the money, and my total dynamic head is 27, we'll call that 28 uh, feet of total dynamic head. And if you remember, the E1 pump is capable of up to 185 feet. So if this was my application, if if uh, someone was asking about this, or this this is what I needed to do, I knew I know uh, comfortably that an E1 pump will be able to work in this application. But say my length, my zone was longer than 250 feet. Say it was you know, 2,500 feet, almost half a mile. Let's see what happens there. So I can, right from this design page one, I can change the length of that zone and automatically all my calculations get updated. So here I am, uh, even at 2,500 feet, I'm still at uh, 54 feet. And and from here, this is kind of where you can you can kind of experiment to see what that zone length is going to be. So what, what happens if this was 4,000 feet? And you see it progressively increases. Uh, what if it was 8,000 feet? 
so on and so forth. You know, 10,000 feet, you know, we're almost two miles. Um, you know, we're, we're getting up there. 14,000 feet. Oops, I think it went too many zeros. Oh, okay, you know, <laughs> I'm 140,000 feet. How about, how about that? There we go. So uh, now I put in 14,000 feet and look, I'm over that 185 feet ahead. Now the software conditionally formats that cell to say, hey, something's not going right with it. So I got to drop this down a little bit. What if that was 1300 feet? You know, so I'm going to be somewhere in that range. And again, you can play with design assistant to, to find these things out. Now I wanted to show you some, uh, something when it comes to retention time. If I go back to my original number of 250 feet, uh, pretty, pretty easy, easy job for any one grinder pump 28 feet. I'm going to go to design page two, and, and design page two is where we perform the calculations for accumulated retention time. So again, this is how long it takes for the wastewater to reach the discharge point. At 250 feet, we are calculating that it'll take about two... 2.75 hours, almost three hours for sewage to reach that, that discharge point. Now, retention time varies based on, um, you know, region. Uh, E1 only provides some very, very basic guidance on, on retention time, but something to keep in mind. You know, usually uh, under four hours is no problem. Four to eight hours is getting a little bit up there. You know, eight and eight and, and more hours or eight hours and longer, uh, you start to introduce risks of odor um, septicity, and even corrosion at that discharge point. So something to keep in mind. Sometimes there's nothing we can do about um, the retention time, but I just want to show you what the impact is. If I went back up to that zone length and have to edit it on design page one, but say, say it was a thousand feet now, um, again, my total dynamic head is just fine. My velocity is fine. So I meet those parameters. But if I look at design page two, I see that my retention time is really starting to creep up. And again, this is a function of that flow rate per pump, the number of pumps there are, the length of that pipe. So, so, so really something to keep in mind when you are uh, trying to trying to determine uh, the length of, of uh, or the maximum pumping distance uh, for, uh, for any one pump. You know, and when time gets up there, if this is just a reality, uh, you can uh, you can recommend things like odor odor control odor management maybe some sort of uh, carbon filter or more sophisticated odor control um, from a corrosion resistant standpoint if there's say we are discharging into a concrete manhole there might be uh, some good recommendations about having this be a polyethylene or an epoxy lined manhole just again to to help prevent any 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 uh, uh, degradation of that manhole due to uh, to the you know corrosion uh, in that in that septic uh, wastewater. So there you go. That's that general process. And I hope this was useful. I just want to put a plug out there. Uh, if you're looking for more information, feel free to visit the E1 Sewer System Knowledge Center from that link or that QR code. And likewise, check out E1's YouTube page for uh, more tutorials, webinars, case studies, all those sorts of things from that link. Thanks for your time.